Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad to have you with us today for Jesus the Healer. We have been studying on some uh, healing passages in the Bible. We're looking at some of the miracles of healing that happened under Jesus' earthly ministry. And today we're going to start in Matthew chapter 15. Why are we looking at these? Because the Bible says Jesus went everywhere teaching, preaching, and healing. So what does that say? It's a package deal. If we'll listen to his teaching and his preaching, we'll receive the healing. And let me say this, Bible teaching arrives us at healing. Amen. So we want to give God not only the opportunity for God's people to be taught, so we teach them, but we also want to give God the opportunity to minister healing to them through us. Amen. Amen. And do you know, uh, we could say this, that every believer is assigned uh, a portion of the healing in the sense of not only can we receive healing, but the Bible says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That is something not just pastors, Mm -hmm. not just ministers are commanded to do, but we are to lay hands on the sick as a believer and they shall recover. But we have to believe. Amen. Amen. And so uh, we're looking at these passages because in these passages, we can see what we need to learn to receive healing Mm -hmm. and to minister healing. Amen. So Matthew chapter 15 and verse 21, let's read the whole passage. It says, then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It's not meat or right to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Lord, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. So notice this. Hers was not a a case of physical sickness. It was a case she needed deliverance from the power of the devil. And notice uh, the word said her daughter was made whole. Mm -hmm. To be delivered is a flow of health, a flow of healing. Amen. Amen. That same power that flows to heal will flow and set people free from the power of the devil. Now let's go back and let's look at this in detail, this passage. Let's look at verse 21. It says, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. So Tyre and Sidon were regions where the Gentiles lived, not where Jews lived. Gentiles are those who are not Jews. What's that mean? They have no covenant with God. So Jesus was telling her, I'm sent to the Jews. I'm sent to those with a covenant. Remember that. So he's walking through a region that there aren't Jews there. It's all people without a covenant. So he walked among the people that, uh, well, let me say this. The Jews would have no interaction Mm -hmm. with the Gentiles. Um, they had, they, they had no covenant with God, so they would not intermingle. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, although at this time they had no covenant 
with God available to them, Jesus was walking through that region to see who would soon be brought into covenant with him. Oh, he's good. looking at, I, he's, if I could say this, it's like, I'm not just walking through the Jewish territories. I'm walking through every territory, letting them know help's here, help's coming. Covenant is coming to you. If I could say this, he's looking over his harvest. He's going to pay the price for all men. Amen. Amen. And so th- it's, it's important to recognize what region he's in because he's not there to announce yet. He's there to, if I could say this, to recognize dying for all of you. Yeah. He was seeing people he would die for and he loved them. He loved them enough to die for him. Verse 22. So he's in this Gentile territory, right? And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts. So she's in that region too. And cried unto him saying, have mercy on me. O Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. So notice this. Um, There again, she says, O Lord, is he her Lord? No, she's not in covenant with him. He's not in covenant with her yet. That covenant had not been opened to the Gentile world and preached to the Gentile world yet. Um, So we see this. She said, O Lord, thou son of David, uh, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. It tells us that now in in the book of Mark, now we're reading it out of the book of Matthew. The book of Mark records it this way, that she had heard of Jesus. Otherwise, she had to hear something or she wouldn't know to come because he's not there preaching in that region. He's not announcing anything. It says that he's walking through that region. He's not there ministering to the people. So she heard something of him. So she must have heard that he would set people free for that's what she came for. Right? What's this mean? It matters what you hear about what Jesus will do. It matters what you hear. If you hear the wrong thing about Jesus, you'll believe the wrong thing. If you hear that God puts sickness on people to teach them something, you'll believe the wrong thing. But that's the wrong thing. If you hear the right thing, that it's Satan who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. John 10, 10 said, Satan, the thief, Jesus was speaking, said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. And he said, but I've come that you might have life. Uh, Notice two have come, choose. Choose which one you're going to receive from. Jesus said, Satan came for one cause, to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come, but I've come. Amen. We're not sentenced to just receive from Satan who came. That's right. Jesus came. Yes. Amen. Amen. And he came that we might have life more abundantly. Uh, how many of you know anything that steals, kills, and destroys God didn't have anything to do with? Jesus made it very clear who was behind everything that stole, that killed, and destroyed out of our lives. Yes. Amen. Um, People will say God has everything in control. Not if something's being stolen. Not if something's being uh, steal, kill, and destroy. God's not doing that. That's not God's control. That's the devil's control. And people will say, well, this world's under God's control. That's not true. The word says that Satan is the God of this world. In in, in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, Mm -hmm. Satan is the God of this world, not because he created it, but because Adam turned it over to him in the garden. When he sinned, he turned it over to him. But that's why we needed a savior. And Jesus came. And when we're born again, we're not under the devil's control. This world is under his control, but not us. We have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness is what Colossians tells us. We've been delivered from the kingdom of darkness, translated into the kingdom of his dear son. What's that mean? The world's under, the, under Satan's the God of this world, but he's not the God of us. Amen. And we're not listening and receiving anything that's not of our Lord. Satan, Satan's no longer lording it over us. Amen. So if you hear though the wrong thing, well, God, you know, that person died because God need another angel in heaven. Well, you don't become an angel when you get to heaven. 
So that's wrong. And plus, God has an innumerable number of angels. It's not, if he needed more, he would create more. He does, you know, humans don't become angels. Amen. So you have to go back to the Bible to find out these things because we hear all kinds of, all kinds of, if I could say this, explanations that people try to find to define why tragedy happens. Go to the Word. Go to the Word. And, and Jesus announced why tragedy happens. In John 10:10, 10, 10, Satan's come. The enemy, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that you might have life. Anything that's of the flow of life flows from the Father, flows from Jesus. So it does matter what you hear. If you sit in a place that teaches you, Jesus puts sickness on you to teach you something, you know what you're going to do? You're going to receive sickness when it comes to you. When, right. when Satan comes to offer you sickness, you'll think God is visiting you. Yeah. Yeah. It matters what you hear right. because what you hear is what you believe. You hear the wrong thing, you believe the wrong thing. You hear the right thing, you believe the right thing. So it does matter what you hear. Yes. Amen. Jesus, this, this woman heard of Jesus. She heard something good. Amen. Amen. Notice it doesn't say she saw him. She hadn't seen, and it didn't, she, didn't even hear, she didn't even hear him preaching. Now, she saw him this day, but she heard of him before she ever saw him. She believed something about him before she ever saw him. It wasn't seeing him that caused her to believe. She believed at the hearing. And when she saw him, then that's why she approached him, because she believed something before she ever saw him. She believed something. She believed the report, the account that she had heard of him. She had never heard a sermon. She just heard of him. Amen. Amen. Notice how quick faith can come. Just hearing. Just hearing. Amen. Um, so she heard something good because she believed something right. Amen. Now notice this mother said, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. She's vexed. She's troubled by an evil spirit. I have to say this because the daughter is living with the mother. What's going on in that home? That her daughter got a devil or the devil was able to take advantage of the daughter while in that home. It matters what you allow in your home. It matters what you permit in your home. It matters who you let in your home. <clears throat> we don't live in fear, but we are sober. You know, I know as a pastor, I didn't just let anyone preach in my pulpit. Why? Because whoever I invite into the pulpit is going to make a deposit sure. in that local church so and true. in those people. And I want to make sure that it's the kind of deposit I want them to have. Amen. As a pastor, I didn't just open up my pulpit to anybody. I had to know them. Right. Don't open your home up just to anybody. Know them. Yes. Know them. Amen. Either this daughter got something while living in that home. An evil spirit took advantage of this girl while living in that home or she went outside that home and picked up something. Know where your children are. Know who they're with. Know where they're going. Know who they're hanging out with. Amen. Because what they're participating in, they're bringing back home. Amen. So it, pay attention, parents. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. Amen. Um, could this mother lay hold of help for her daughter? Absolutely, for one reason. She was in authority over this girl. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. She Amen. was in, living in this yes. home with the mother, and she had authority over the girl. Mm -hmm. So what's that mean? Her faith could work on behalf of her daughter. Yes. Amen. So you can't just randomly... Mm -hmm. Go up to people and minister to anybody you want, anytime you want, because you don't have authority over everybody. You have authority over those. If you're a parent, you have authority over those in your home. You don't have authority over the neighbor's home. You don't have authority over the children in the, net, in the neighbor's house. Amen. How can we be a blessing to others who are not under our authority? 
that need help. How can we be a blessing? They have to open the door. They have to invite. Yes. They have to ask yes. for help. Or they have to hear something and come to you and uh, say, I want help. Because you can't force your way into people's life. That's even right. you can't force good things right. into people's lives. Amen. God doesn't even do that. Right. We, we're born again when we invite him in. Right. God doesn't force his way into anybody. Right. Amen. 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 So this girl was under the mother's authority. Mm-hmm. That, that being said, the mother's faith could work in behalf mm-hmm. of the daughter. Right. Okay. Now, as our children grow and come into adulthood, they're going to have to have faith for themselves. Yes. Not right. to say you can't pray for your children still, not to say you won't be an assist, but God expects them yes. to be able to develop their own faith right. and to receive from Him themselves. Yes. Right. So don't, don't just do all the believing for your children. Teach them. As they are under your authority and your faith can work for them while they're young, But during those years, teach them, honey, I'm going to join my faith with you. This is what you say. This is how you believe God. This is what you tell the devil. Tell him no. You have to, you have to instill that in your children because there's going to come a day they have to stand on their own faith feet. Amen. Amen. And so we see this, uh, that this girl evidently was young enough that the authority of the mother still worked. Uh, now verse 22 the mother said, she cried unto Jesus saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. Notice, she didn't even say have mercy on my daughter. She has said, have mercy on me. That's right. To be delivered, now look at this, to be delivered from the power of the devil is a flow of the mercy of God. Amen. That's what she asked for. Right. She called it mercy. And so to be delivered, she didn't say have mercy on my daughter. She said, have mercy on me. Why? It's the heartbreak of a parent to watch a child suffer. Not only that, this girl having uh, the devil tormenting her, that girl's tormenting the home. That devil is tormenting the home through that girl. And it's a hardship on that mother to have her home home in disarray in this way, right? So it is a mercy to the mother to not have to live in a home that's being yeah. tormented. Yes. Uh, the devil's tormenting that home through this, through this daughter. So um, notice the wording, though, again in verse 22. Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. Lord, thou son of David. She's calling him Lord. He's not her Lord. She's not a Jew. He's not in covenant with her. She's not in covenant with him. And she calls him son of David. That's a terminology that a Jew would use, but not a terminology a Gentile would use. Because he's not son of David to her. What's this mean? She's heard him. She heard something of him. Remember, uh, Mark told us she had heard of Jesus. Mm -hmm. She heard other things too about him. She no doubt heard him called Lord, son of David. So she's taking those words that she's heard. Now we got to appreciate her. She pays attention. (laughs) She listens. She pays attention. But she's taking words that a Jew would have used. And she's putting them in her mouth. Why? Because she thinks this is what he would like to hear out of her. You know, sometimes people approach God and say things to him they think he would like to hear out of them. But can I tell you this? He doesn't want to hear borrowed words. He doesn't want to hear words that aren't of your heart. He wants to hear what you believe. He doesn't just want to hear a religious title, religious terminology. He wants to hear from your heart. So I say this is one way to look at it. She's using, she's approaching him with borrowed words. They don't fit her. They, so they wouldn't have come out of her heart. Jesus, Jesus recognizes heart words, right? So notice in verse 23, when she says, Oh Lord, son of David, she's told him what she's, what, what her need is. Mm -hmm. She's calling him this title. 
Lord, son of David. But notice his response to her in verse 23. He answered her not a word. He was silent. Now, it looks like the preacher's being rude. Sometimes to get people their help, others may think you're mishandling someone. Jesus was not being rude. He's trying to arrive her at her need being met. I, I remember in my service, in, 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 a, in a service, I was there, my husband was there, but my husband was preaching. This was years ago. And he was laying hands. He called for those who needed healing and he was laying hands on people. And in the midst of that, a man came up to my husband and said, don't minister to them that way. <laughs> well, that was a mistake to come up to my husband and say that. My husband said this, I know my business. Don't tell me how to do my business. Yeah. Why? That person thought that they knew more mm -hmm. about how to minister under that anointing on my husband than my husband did, which was not, it's inappropriate, right? Yeah. You don't, you, that's an inappropriate yes. approach. But I appreciated something my husband said, don't tell me how to do my business. He was skillful. And you don't listen to people without skill Right. Tell you what to do because my husband was trying to arrive this person at their answer, and that other person was trying to interfere with that person receiving their answer. So, from the outside looking on, it looked like my husband was doing it wrong, but my husband <clears throat> was trying to help that person arrive at their need met. <clears throat> now, if somebody would have heard Jesus, and they did hear, the disciples heard, it looks like Jesus is doing the wrong thing. He's ignoring her. Mm -hmm. right. But none of the disciples walked up and said, Jesus, you're being rude. Mm -hmm. You're not answering her. Mm -hmm. you, you, you don't know how the Spirit of God is leading a minister many times. That's right. That's right. But the Spirit, if we follow the Spirit of God, He'll always arrive us at our help. Mm -hmm. So you can't look at how a pastor may minister and say, he shouldn't do that. You have to be careful yes. about yes. that. Because sometimes he has a skill with the, his gifting and his anointing that others don't, aren't responsible for. Amen. Amen. So it looked like he wasn't being good, mm -hmm. yeah. doesn't it? Jesus right. is ignoring this woman. He's answering her not a word. He's not e it looks like he's not even responding yeah. to yeah. her need. Mm -hmm. And an onlooker may say, he's being rude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's doing it wrong. He's not being good, but the word says the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. He can't be anything but good. He can't be anything but merciful. So what we know by him not answering her, it's a flow of his goodness. Why? Because his goodness is going to bring her into a greater place of faith. You got to stay with me on this. You got to stay with me because notice after Jesus wouldn't respond to her, Notice what she did. She went over to the disciples. She's asking them for help. Why are you asking him, them for help if you believed he was, Jesus was the one? You called him the Lord. You called him the son of David. But when he doesn't respond, she goes another route. Listen, uh, if it looks like something's not working out, the way you want it to work out. Stay with the word. Stay with the word. Don't go to another, don't go to another location trying to get help. In the sense of don't back off what you believe. Yes. Amen. Amen. So she goes and, um, and, and so she goes over to the disciples and she says, you know, tries to get their attention. And they said, she's bothering us. She's bothering us. <laughs> well, why? Because she's almost, if I could say this, she's shifting locations. Where, where's my help coming from? You got to appreciate her though. Yeah. She go, I'm not leaving this place without my help. I'm not leaving this place without my help. And in verse 23, it says, but, but he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him saying, send her away for she's crying after us. Uh, why is that? He wants to hear from her. Jesus did not answer her because he wants to hear something different out of her than what she's saying. He doesn't want to hear her borrowed words. He doesn't want to hear religious 
talk yes. that doesn't come from her heart. Yes. He yes. wants to hear what she believes uh -huh. about him. Uh -huh. Amen. It's good. Amen. Amen. So he, she goes over to the disciples and it's almost like she's frantically looking, where's my help? Uh -huh. But you got to admit, she's not a quitter. That's she's right. not a quitter. She's not. Just keep going until, you know, don't ever get up, give up or you know you don't receive. But if you won't give up, God will lead you to your help. But he answered and said, I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he's saying, I'm sent to the Jew. I'm not sent to the Gentile at this, this point in my time. And I love she, in verse 25, then came she and worshiped him. Ah, she makes a second approach to him. Notice what was missing in her first approach, worship. She didn't worship him the first time. Listen to the simplicity of her approach the second time. Lord, help me. Help me. That's her heart. Jesus moved her from a religious response to the response of her heart. That's why he didn't answer her until he heard from her heart. Now I can get her help. Amen. It's not just hearing hearing a, a mental response from you. God wants to hear your heart. What do you believe? And listen, evidently that request was enough. Help me. Can I tell you this? When you don't know what to do, say, help me. Did he help her? He did help her. Well, we're not, we're not done with this. We'll have come back to this, but you're going to have to watch the next episode and we'll finish this up. Uh, we've been teaching out of my book called The Healer Divine. We want you to get your own copy. It'll be a blessing to you. And it's all the studies of Jesus' healings and miracles under his earthly ministry. Uh, you can go to our website at jesusthehealer.org and purchase your copy there. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In this classic book by Nancy Dufresne, The Healer Divine, we are presented with a study of the healings of Jesus. Your faith will be stirred to believe and act as the healed God has already made you to be. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. Come join us for our Jesus the Healer Crusade in Ontario, Canada at Promise of Life Church, August 25th through the 29th. For more information and to register, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. Come expecting miracles. I want to make available to you our teaching on the confessions of healing. I do a short teaching and then there are many healing scriptures that I confess. But the thing that's so special about this one is I give you space after every phrase to repeat it along with me so that you can make your own confession of faith. You can go to our website at jesusthehealer.org and purchase your copy today. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. This is Nancy Dufresne, and I want to extend an invitation to you to become a partner with Dufresne Ministries today. God bless you. Partnership helps with crusades held nationwide and abroad, printing and publishing of books and other materials, operational costs in TV and other media broadcasts. For more information and to sign up to become a partner, go to DufresneMinistries.org.